You're watching the Metaphysical Mentor Podcast with Michael Philpott. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the show today. This is the Metaphysical Mentor Podcast with me, Michael Philpott. And uh, before we get started there, Sasha, I just want to say, I always say this uh, at the beginning of every podcast, I got to say thank you to all my listeners all across the world. Um, I really appreciate you. Um, you know, you guys have been very supportive over the past year. So again, thank you for that. Now you can watch this video if you want to watch the podcast video on, um, on um, YouTube. So if you do, please like and subscribe. Really appreciate that. It always helps. I'm trying to uh, gather some subscribers. You can also watch it on Rumble too. So I put it on Rumble and Spotify and also on Apple too as well. So if you're over on the Apple platform, please give it a five star and give it a nice little rating. I'd always appreciate that. That being said, Sasha, hold on. Wet the whistle here. <clears throat> so how are you, my friend? Okay, well, I'm doing pretty well. And thank you so much for inviting me on your show. I'm really excited to be here and talk about biofield tuning. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really glad, glad you reached out. And I'm going to have to thank John again. So he sent me a few people and uh, Mr. Breen there. So uh, yeah, it was uh, it was really nice. But and it was so fascinating when you actually said it because I love alternative healing modalities. I love these things. And I love things that are based in science too, as well. I love, like I always say, I love the woo woo, but I love science based stuff. So one of the things that was really interesting before we went to air, we had a conversation that you were doing your advanced training on biofield healing. And then, so for those who are listening, maybe you could just describe what biofield healing is all about. Right. Um, well, biofield uh, healing is what I do is actually called biofield tuning. So okay. we're working with uh, tuning forks and um, I'll just show them. So we work with unweighted tuning forks, right? That are, whoops, gonna look, I gotta find the camera that are gonna look like this, right? And you can bump these and they're going to make a sound. So there we go, just try to find where the camera is, good. And um, those will be used around the body in the energy field of the body. And then these, this is a weighted tuning fork. And when it's activated, you just give it a bump. This can be placed on the body, right? Like literally anywhere on your body. So, um, and they're used uh, together often in the same session. Okay. So just, just the thing, is there a big difference between the weighted ones and the non-weighted ones as far as frequency goes? Um, all of the forks will have a different Hertz frequency to them, right? So they're all going to do slight something slightly different. Um, but first, let me talk about why the tuning forks work, right? And why you might want to, why you might be interested in using them or how they might help. Yeah, please so, do. Yeah, so using tuning forks is really the uh, based on the idea or really the the fact that our bodies are electrical. Our bodies are electrical, our bones are piezoelectric, our blood is electric. When we have, if you have a heart attack, uh, we bring electricity to bring you back, right? So anything that has electricity flowing through it and moving through it has a magnetic, uh, you know, area around it, has a, a magnetic, uh, what am I trying to say? You know, aura. I don't want to say the word aura, but yeah, a magnetic field. There we go. <laughs> That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. We have a magnetic field around our body. So you, when you're using the tuning forks on our bodies, we're almost thinking like we're ungumming our electrical system or getting it all connected upright. So we're really trying to get that charge of um, electricity moving through our body that's making us healthy, that's making us vibrant, we're really trying to move it through all of the parts in our body that have gotten stuck, right? Sort of stuck with stress, um, emotions, maybe pain that we're holding in our body. So this tuning board starts to move that energy through your body. And so we work with them on the body, but then also in the magnetic field, right? So okay. it's, yeah. So that's, that's uh, absolutely fascinating. Now with the magnetic field, are you trying to create like a, a coherent waveform or a frequency within the body? 
Yeah, the idea is is when we're walking around in our day to day life, right? We've got a lot of static going on, and we're picking up, you know, all of the EMF frequencies. We've got everything that we're thinking about, all of the tr different tracks that are running in our head, our worries, this, that, the other thing. So we've got all this static, right, going on. And when you bring a fork into the field, that fork, the vibration of that fork, the frequency of that fork will start to override any of the incoherence in the field. It's going to just start to just calm it down and it's going to entrain to the frequency of the fork. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how it works. And with there's certainly a lot of different tuning forks out there. Uh, but I lean with biofield tuning. So biofield tuning is um, by this woman called Eileen McCuthick. I'm actually going to show her book because it's got a really cool title. Um, and it's this one is called, whoops, sorry. Just pull, just pull it back just a bit. Just pull no, back there we go. There we go. And electric, electric body, electric health. So biofield tuning is specifically something she has created using tuning forks. Okay. So, and she, and she has mapped out um, our body as well as our bio field, right? Which would be the magnetic field that's surrounding us, but she's called it the bio field. So she's actually made a map of that, of what uh, what is held in our field, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah cuz I, I remember I was watching some uh, doing my research on it and watching some videos on that where she talks about uh, generational trauma things stored in the outer know, field. Um what I didn't find is that she did she talk talk about the various like did she talk about mapping it out. Did she have very specific layers that she mapped out? So let's say for example I'm from what I remember again this is why you're on here cuz you, you can fix uh, correct me if I'm wrong is that this farthest part like 6 feet out is the what they call the generational or birth trauma? I think she called it birth trauma. Is out there, and that's that particular layer. Is there like four, five, six, ten, twelve different layers that are uh, emanating that she's mapped out from the body, for example? Yeah. So what we do when we're working at in the field is you go out about five or six feet from people. And that is the edge of their field. So we're surrounded by this. Our field has a bit of a membrane. And at the edge of our field is our birth, right? So in that field is held possibly anything that was going on with our parents during that time, how our mom felt when she was pregnant, and anything that happened during birth. So the, the field moves from birth. As you move closer and closer to the body, you're just coming in towards the present. So you're literally moving through the lifeline of the person with the fork. So I would be, and you can use, uh, generally out in the field, we will use the weighted, um, sorry, the unweighted fork. And this is done by bumping the fork and it's gonna make a sound and a vibration. And then we're combing in. So we're combing in through the field. The idea that there are this sort of electrical clumps of bio photons of energy that's in our field. Okay. And you can hear, you can hear when the fork, I can actually hear and feel when the fork hits something that's incoherent, right? And then that would be any sort of uh things that you've gone through in your life that might be stored trauma. So when we go through, uh, it could be even just be stress, right? You had a little, you fell off your bike when you were 10 and there'll be like this, ah, in, in your field. And so what we're trying to do is take that bit of stress that's held out in your field and comb it back, back in towards your body, giving it back to you, right? Back to your energy field instead of all of these bits of stress and trauma that we've sort of like frozen and held out in, in our field. It's almost a little bit um, like the idea of soul retrieval, but it's like basically you're retrieving your energy that got stuck in stress and emotional responses out in your field so that you can become much more coherent and clear 
through your whole body, through the electrical charge running all the way up and around your body. So the way the um, Eileen has, I don't want to say, the way she's figured out, and this is just generally accepted, so the, or the Taurus, right? The Tauric field. Mm -hmm. right? So energy comes up through the bottom of our feet. It comes out the top of our head and around Right, and that magnetic field is our bio field out to the edge of our field, right where it's for So we have this energy that comes up and around, and then at the same time we have a bi-directional flow where it comes down through our central channel out our feet and around. So this channel is the electrical channel of your body that's running all the time, and when um, and the tuning fork. So when you get stressed and um, pain or even injuries in your body we're sort of gripping on right we grip we grip into our emotions and instead of letting things flow through us we like grip onto them and stick them somewhere in our body so what the forks are doing is they're sending this electricity they're trying to free it up and start to move this electrical flow of energy so that this bi-directional flow starts to move again in the way that it's meant to so in a way, you know, it's it's similar, again, it's similar in the idea, the concept of acupuncture, where we have the meridians, we're trying to get the energy flowing, the chi flowing through, but we're trying to get the electromagnetic field to move in a harmonious pattern. Is that the, is that basically the idea? Yeah, that is basically the idea, but it is also uh, really based on moving the energy through your body, right? So you can, as we're sending the energy up, with the idea of the central channel or the chakras, the energy comes up through the bottom of the feet, up through your legs. You can think of sort of filling yourself with this spiraling uh, white energy from the earth. So the earth actually has, an. you can actually, I like to think of it as a battery. So at the bottom of our feet, we have a negative charge. That's a negative charge of energy from the earth. Okay? And that comes all the way up and it. we wanna clear the, clear all of our energy centers uh, and just charge up our body and fill ourselves back with this light, uh, kind of this nurturing energy that's always coming up through the earth, right? Filling our body, letting it fill us up with light and letting it clear and open up through the chakras, right? As it comes out the top of your head, right? And then coming down through the top of your head is the positive charge, right? So you can kind of think it's like you're connecting heaven and earth to, with that energetic charge of the battery. And you just wanna charge up your body as much as you can, right? You wanna be, have some like really good voltage going on, right? So at yeah. first we would just really charge that, charge up the voltage of sending the energy up and sending the energy down. And then penduluming through the chakras, one of those chakras will, will tell us, um, you know, the pendulum will tell us which chakra wants a little bit of help today, right? And then we'll look at the biofield map and we'll be like, okay, so it was solar plexus on the right hand side. And this is going to talk about power um, uh, on the masculine side. So we'll go out to the edge of the field and start to comb in. So anything having to do with power imbalances or, or struggles with uh, masculine or with male energy in your life. So just combing those through, bringing back any of that energy that stuck out in your field, bringing it back to you and back into that uh, basic, uh, back into the, the up and down charge that bi-directional flow. So it really, it's bringing it back into you. Like you're getting your energy back and charging like up that. the battery of your, of your, yeah, your body. I really like that. That sounds so fascinating. So basically you divide the body into hemispheres, left, left side, right side too, as well. So you go into male, female energies, right? So if yes. there was, like you were saying, there were some traumatic incidents or something that stuck from the third center, that is again male side right so if it's on the right hand side it's the male side and yeah. you're combing that in so you're bringing any trauma again maybe it could be from the father father figure or you know brother or something like that that's that male energy it could be anybody that and yeah. you're bringing it in so similar like you were saying to like soul retrieval like those fragmented parts of you that are bringing yeah. it in so how does the body recognize that and process that 
is it kind of is can there be like a really dramatic release of emotion as that are you re, when you're combing that in and you're reclaiming that energy bringing it back into the body that there is a, a deep release of emotion that you may find with some of your clients um yes some people can have that but really the biofield tuning is is very gentle like it is very gentle um, so what I would be doing out in the field with the fork, uh, I can also use these, right? And in this one, I'm not hearing the fork so much, but I'm feeling the vibration. And run it when I run into a bit of stuck energy, I'm not really focusing on what the story is. Again, I might say, hey, we're on your right side. This is around 15, and, the, and I'm feeling in the fork um, anger. Like there's a lot of, right? anger in the fork so we don't need to go into the story but what we're going to do is start to just bring that we're going to let the fork bring that anger back into coherence like we're okay. trying to just i think of it as kind of like our anger or our emotion get tangled in these balls um right that are held out in our field and that vibration of the fork is kind of smoothing smoothing it out and untangling it right so okay. I would say just like a massage, right? If you have like a really big ball of like tightness in here, you go one time, it's still probably going to be there, but we're just slowly taking the emotional charge that's stuck in our field and smoothing it out. So those places that we have of, of ch emotional charge from events that we've been through in our life slowly starts to to soften and leave, right? So definitely. So you don't, you're not as reactive to any decision. As, as reactive. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah, so it really starts to lessen the reactivity. And you will also have, generally what I find with biofield tuning is sometimes it can be right away, but more often it can be the next day when you're thinking back on your tuning and that's when you can have a bit of an emotional release or you can be like, oh my gosh, that's what that was. And you start to connect the bits. And as these tangled um, clumps of basic like right, the reactivity in our field, um, as we just start to bring them back in, we also bring back that, you know, the energy that, that stuck around. We bring that back that energy to us and we become much more coherent. So like you said, like just generally less reactive about that thing, having a larger understanding of it, okay. just becoming more intelligent and more aware and being able to really process um, our emotions in a really gentle way. Uh, yeah, in a really, it's a really gentle but effective way. Yeah, it sounds like that too as well, which is, I think a lot of people are, you know, they they want to do the work, but sometimes they don't they don't want the messiness of it. They want the subtlety and the, uh, the, the kind of the compassion behind it, the, you know, so it's not as kind of like that. But the awareness that you would probably get from that, like you were saying, is that the whole idea is that you get those aha moments you know, yeah. afterwards, the day afterwards, you go, oh, that's why I had this issue. And it seems yeah. to smooth it out. So it's no longer. Now, yeah. do you find that, let's say, because if it was on this side, and you seem to be more angry, do you find people after they have that, and you work the, the tuning fork through that area, you comb through it, is it, a, is they find that they attract less anger? Because you know when people are angry people, they're always they attract more angry people. Do you find uh, that they are less attracting le or attracting less anger in their life? Oh yeah, absolutely. That I mean that just makes sense, right? So we're as we become more coherent, like we're really trying to take ourselves out of that reactive space where we don't know why we're reacting to things, we don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, so we're really. Sorry, just ask me your question again. I started rambling. But... That's okay. It was basically what we were talking about is that if people are, once they have, like, you start combing through the uh, the session, right? So we talked about the yeah. anger, right? Yeah. And we're moving through that. The, the next day they have the ha ha moment. Because yeah. we've changed the frequency of that, you know, because we talk about like attracts like. Yes. No, are they going to sure. attract more anger? Because if you're an angry guy or an angry person, 
right? And you seem to always attract anger. As you go out on the street, you're having an angry day, your whole day just seems to be angry, make you more angry. No, yeah, no, 100%, right? So this, this does really start to smooth that out. And I think I was trying to say just about is bring you out of this sense of like chaos, right? This reactive chaos into a much more coherent state, right? Just a coherent state where you really have much more understanding of, of why you're reacting to things. You have just, yeah, and everything is just goes a little bit more easily. So I think one of the things to uh, talk about with biofield tuning is that it's really amazing for relaxation and anxiety, right? So it Okay, so yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, because I think yeah. that's really important. A lot of people are, are certainly feeling it these days over the past couple of years. You know, you must be a really busy lady right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually what really brought me to the biofield tuning was just go, right going through everything the last few years and looking for something. I've had tuning forks, uh, but I didn't quite know what to do with them. And then I saw Eileen on the Shift Network, and I I took her program or just listened to her her podcast that time. And I thought, oh yeah, this is exactly this just makes so much sense. Um, it, and it it yeah, I just felt completely drawn to it. So that's what I wanted to do, and I've been doing that yeah for the last uh, number of years. And it it, ha it does it's, it's really an amazing modality. And I love just the idea that we're like we're working with the electrical system of the body. And I just think that that's really cool. And it's uh, and the biofield and it, it's there's she's done a lot of work to um, to do studies with this. And yeah. To, right. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about that, about studies and stuff like that. You know, if uh, she's done like, has she put any, uh, you know, um, uh, brain brain mapping and stuff like that, The you know, as far as mapping the brain out and how, because that's where our central nervous system and everything else is activating and it's, you know, getting that electrical charge. Um, has she like done that? some of those research, you know, put those little head nets on people and checked out the, you know, before and afters uh, of their brain patterns or? Yeah, no, I don't know about that, but the, she has done studies with anxiety. And the latest one was um, they studied a group of, I think, six people, and they each had clinical anxiety, right? So they were diagnosed with clinical anxiety, and after three biofield tunings each, their, their clinical anxiety was gone. So that was published in an alternative journal, but she's doing that now. It's gotten funding to go over um, to, I think it's the, what is it? The American Journal of Medicine. So they're funded. The yeah, EMA. They're, yeah, that's right. So she she's like, okay, enough with the alternative stuff. We know that we're electrical. We know that the biofield is real. Let's stop messing around with this and let's really start to use this sound and vibration healing um right as it is very effective in, in helping people has she ever used like uh clear uh, i'm gonna have a hard time pronounce this clear kill kill Lirian photography okay. you know the or, or photography when yeah, you look at the that photography. I, um no you know what i don't know about that she may or may not have but it's uh i think it's more really her talking about anxiety is Part of the place that she's focused on but yeah i'm sure that you would see like you are literally charging up your body like you're a battery we're electrical batteries and we want to have a high voltage and all of the static and anxiety and different voices in our head really lower our voltage yeah so, and, and certainly you know people in general like static if you're living in a city and you're around a lot of people a lot of unhealthy people and you got all this negative energy coming through. I mean, I'm a empath myself, so I have a hard time just walking out in public anyways these days, but, yes. but yeah. you pick up all that information, all that excess static, like you say, and it kind yeah. of clings to you. Right. And you're wondering why am I feeling so ucky? It's a lot of the stuff is the stuff that you pick up in your energy field. That's filtering through that. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, do you have specific tuning forks for specific energy centers in the body? Um, no. So what Eileen has developed is a set of tuning forks, and it's not that many. So it's about 
It's like, it's around about 10 or 12 forks, but it's not more than that. And she's been doing this for 27 years. So initially she started out using a lot of different forks, right? Um, but then she just found the ones that were the most effective um, and, and work the most. And that's it. She's all about being like simple and effective and efficient. Um, yeah, so she just uses a, a number of different forks, but not a huge variety. And you could, you would use all of them, um, you know, any anywhere that you're working, right? So, okay. yeah. So are, the, are there... Are there certain, uh, I want to kind of touch on the frequencies of it. So it's like 520, a 630, yeah. an 840, okay. whatever. Okay. So let's talk about so, that because I think that's so okay. fascinating. Okay. So with these two forks, um, these are 6264 and 5482 hertz. Okay? okay. So these two together, they create the binaural beat of the Schumann resonance. Okay. okay. So yeah, let's so, let's so let's talk about that for a second. Let's because yeah. because uh, uh, if somebody was listening to that, they go, "What did she just say?" Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's well, talk about that real quick. So this is the vibration or the frequency that the Earth makes, right? Mm -hmm. So these two forks together, they have to be going together, will bring that frequency um, together into your body or around your field. So I can hold these, I can activate them and hold them by the sides of my ears. So just like the binaural beats that you listen to on your headphones, these are automatically going to start to calm down your nervous system and just let you settle a little bit. And then you can also use them right on your body. Okay. There, I'm just like not a <laughs> zoom, zoom pro yet. Uh, you can use them on your body right together and um yeah they're going to bring the frequency of the schumann resonance into your body and these particular forks work really on the uh on the electrical system of your body right so they're okay. really yeah so these two are very specifically for that um but that's you can also use them out in the field it's more like you're going to go with what um what fe what feels right right and what your client really need but these are these two are used a lot and all over the body and and, and it would be similar um to the idea of acupuncture like we're putting these on points of the body okay. right and just to start to move the energy send light send electricity into the body and just open up any channels that are stuck Okay, so are you doing specific organs too as well? So I know you talked about a little yes. bit of, about the, the lines, but are you doing more of a organ specific or is it just pretty intuitive? Like you kind of figure, okay, I got to need to do this organ or is there a set pattern that you guys follow as far as technique goes? You got to start the head, yes. work its way down, go from the out, go from in, or do you start, or just do it intuitively where you go, I just feel this guy's got some, liver stuff i need to put this by the liver and just start reorganizing that right so um what eileen has done uh one thing that i really liked about the biofield tuning is it's very structured right okay. so she has tuning that um here is the tuning that you would always start with people right okay. so this is the one and that's the one i talked about basically we're activating your body as an electrical battery and getting the the field going <laughs> the, the torus right so we're getting that torus going the bi-directional flow um that kind of thing so then you can do uh then she has one for your adrenals like so burnt out adrenals right so you can go in it's called an adrenal reset so you can reset your adrenals and yeah she has a number of of different ones that you can do right but she has they're all done quite specifically right so she's got it um all mapped out of how you do this so, so, so in her book, so she would describe and say, so if you're feeling anxiety, use yeah. tuning fork two, four, let's say, yeah. let's say, like, you so, know, they'll, they'll use whatever yeah. fork is necessary. Okay. Like she's already laid out. This is the sequence no, that you do. No. no. So what, what I would do is um, I would go through and pendulum your body. So just like I said before, I'm going to pendulum your body. 
and then it's gonna I'm gonna look at the map and it's gonna say you know okay right side or left let's say left side of the throat right so I'm gonna go I I'm going to pick she has two forks that um, we use in the field um, which is one is a 174 okay, and one is uh, the 144 and these are our um, unweighted forks right and the, they're bigger than these ones I don't have them with me right here but they're bigger and longer and those are the ones that she calls the workhorse of the field so you can really um, you start to become very familiar with how that one fork sounds and you know when you're hitting fear anxiety sadness and then we're just staying in the field so I might get part way in with the 174 and then I'm going to hit something that doesn't sound good right and I'm gonna we're gonna stay there and hang out with that um you know that sort of clump of bio photons that are stuck in your field right and we're so the bio photons are just light and information encoded light and information right is that yeah, the idea? that's right but that would be your kind of your trauma right or whatever it is the bio photons are all clumped up and stuck together and we're trying to comb them through so you're going to stay in the field and when that doesn't want to move sometimes that that tangle of energy doesn't want to move so you're going to use different forks so then i might actually bring in these two together, right? So the Schumanns, I might bring them into the field and just use them as vibrating. And then I'll go back to the 174 fork and wait till I can hear that the sound has cleared. Then the sound is cleared and we start to move a little bit further towards you. Sort of just like we're kind of just slowly moving, kind of pushing the energy towards you. And then I'll hit another spot, right? And that time I'll be okay. Now we're 30 and the fork is sounding really sad. Now some people can get, um, some people are more, would get pictures, right? Like sometimes I'll get pictures um, of something. So I try to really let myself say what I'm, what I'm feeling, what's coming to mind. And just say, you know, if this means anything to you, um, that's great. If it doesn't, like, don't worry, right? And so then again, we're going to stop at that one, that next point, and we're going to wait until that untangles a little bit. And you can hear it untangling in the sound of the fork. So um, again, I might use one of the other smaller forks here that I've shown. Uh, this is a 528. I have a 528 and a 417 here. So the 528 is, is probably really well known. It's like the love frequency, it's called the love frequency, right? And um, we really use it as a way of, say, DNA repair in the field. So okay. if I really, yeah. So if I feel like this is um, something coming from, almost like your past right the your and your ancestors right your ancestors or something we call the ancestral river and we want to go in there and really start to like just give that some love right really mm -hmm. give that some love and repair so the 528 would be something that i would really add in that vibration of and then we have another smaller one too called the 417 and this just really helps to lighten stuff up. So where things have been uh, traumatic, stressful, um, fearful, you can just start to put this in the field, put this frequency in the field. So I might, I might even put both in together. And then I'm going to go back to the workhorse fork and see if the tone has changed, right? And then, and you can also just feel it. It's like, you know, it's just really brightened up. This feels brightened, it feels ready to move the energy, and then we're slowly moving the energy back into that chakra. So I would be bringing the fork right above uh, your chakra and bringing that energy back, if that's where the pendulum is at, right? We're out in the, in the field, bringing that, back, that energy back in, dropping it in with the fork, and letting that energy just mix back into the chakra and then we're going to column it up right because our chakras uh, shine forward and they shine back so we're just columning it out so you want to think of our energy field as being bright and open and shining forward right so we, we want to not have all that locked down we want to be opening and, and shining our energy forward and and so that's 
the basic idea of, of the TNA. So it's a lot to describe. And no, not but have- it's good because I think it's necessary to describe that. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about because there's so much involved in it. It's not just simply just tuning fork where you go and you're out the door. No. Now, yeah. do you find that you can visually see a somatic release with your client? So let's say you're moving through it and they're like, they're they're sometimes you know like most clients they're on the they're on your table and they're going to be unconscious you know because they're just the, this is the first time i'm going to be able to relax and lie down without having any stress do you sometimes see a physical reaction in the body like either they're twitching or there's something kind of weird going on that as you're moving through that you can you can tell what's going on and then it kind of hits them and then you can see the waveform kind of trickling down into the body have you ever had that experience um, yeah, and I think what we try and ask people is, you know, when we're hitting something, and it's almost more like, I know that I'm hitting something, I'm going to first notice how am I breathing, how are they breathing, often I'll notice breath, people will start holding, holding their breath, certainly people do sometimes, right, have a little bit of a, they may move when you hit something, but generally it's almost more of a feeling of like, Oh, okay, I'm hitting something. And then I'm going to ask, I would be asking you, you know, what are you noticing right now? Like, maybe what are you, what's coming to mind? Did a feeling like come up? What are you, what are you noticing right now? Right? So people will generally when you have hit something, yeah, people, and you start to talk about it. This is not something you don't need to be, you can be quiet on the table or not. You can talk, you can move around a little bit. Sometimes it's good to just move your body, right? And just start to shake, shake this out. Cause we really, that's what we want to do. Is we want to like move it around and start to get this stuff moving, get it, get it. Yeah. Moving in our field. So that idea of, you know, better out than in, even with these emotions, we're trying to yeah, of get, them, get, get everything moving again. So, yeah. You, um, I know because you've been a, a Pilates instructor too, for a while too, as well. Do you integrate some of your Pilates techniques with your clients too, as well, as far as stretching movement, you know, kind of using the the two ends of the uh, of the uh, of the sword there, where it's basically you can get the body movement through the stretching and elongating, open up the pathways within the body, and then using the tuning forks as that uh, as another additional to that too as well. Yeah, what the way that I would use that is not so much in a tuning session, um, but I would use that more with my clients. So what I I thought. Uh, really just occurred to me that is, is kind of cool when I started doing the biofield tuning was that like, wow, you know, Pilates really focuses on alignment. It's all about basically the mechanical structure of our body and getting that back into uh, good alignment. And when you're in good alignment, how much easier everything becomes to move, right? Like all of a sudden you can, you just feel more open in your body easier to move you feel a sense of uh, relief and a, just a sense of like just these holding patterns in your body can just uh right resolve themselves when you're in a better physical alignment and so when i was doing the biofield tuning i'm like oh wow this is awesome it's like we're basically bringing our just like our whole um you know I don't know what would we call our electrical body into alignment, right? Or our energetic body into alignment. So that's what we're really doing. And when we have that in alignment, we do. We're able to feel there's a sense of like coherence and that we can relax and things are in the right place. And we have that sense of spaciousness rather than being feeling like we're constricted and kind of stuck. So um, now to answer your question, uh, sometimes I will use the tuning forks at the end of a Pilates session on people um, or even during it. If some people have neck tension, if they're having headaches, if they might have swelling or body pain, right? So if they're having knee issues, you can certainly go in with the tuning forks, the weighted tuning forks. Um, and put them on the body, and that can actually help. So um, to 
uh, really quote Eileen as she always would talk about how there's, you know, there's Harvard studies showing that if you put mechanical stimulation on damaged tissue, it will heal much, much faster. Um, I can't remember the amount, 10 or 12 times faster than if it wasn't stimulated. So, right, and, and I've had that experience myself working with people who have had Again, like knee issues, neck issues, low back issues, you can use the forks as just a, a complementary uh, modality for people, right? And sometimes people will want to combine, you know, they might come in and feel a bit of low energy or not feeling so good, or they just might not be up to doing a whole session, right? So they can always do uh, part of the Pilates session and then part of the tuning session, right? And that way you get both. Both, both best of both worlds. Yeah, best of both worlds. That's well, that's right. yeah, that's that's fantastic. Now I have to ask you a question on this. Do your friends bother you? Says, do you have your five twenty with you? I'm feeling like I'm feeling out of whack. I need you to tune me up. Like, I mean, yeah. it must it must be like, do you have it in your car? Do you have it in your purse? Like, you know, uh, I, I've had friends like that. It's like, oh, I need some Reiki right now. Can you just do a little Reiki on me? And it's like, no, okay. But do you find that happens to you a lot now? Um, yeah, I do. You know, I, we walk around often. The fork that I would be carrying with me is one called the Sonic Slider. And, okay, I'm going to try and get this right. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So these, these forks have the little boot on the end. And this little boot, you can see it's got little dots on it. or just like little holes. So what happens is when I activate this fork and put it on my body, right, just the vibration spreads out. And there's one specifically called the sonic slider that's really used – um, on the body. So really, that would be the ones that clients would just be like, what was that? That was that's, that, that's amazing. I want to have that fork. I want to, you know, put that on my shoulder or right on my head or wherever they're, they're hurting. So they want to that people have completely um, gone and bought their own. I've had that help people with swelling, bring the swelling down um, from, you know, in their legs, things like that. So. Yeah, so that was one of the things I was going to ask you about is can you purchase some of these tuning forks and use it on yourself, like the sonic slider? Yeah. It's just like yeah. instead of going to buy a massage gun or yeah. buying some other type of uh, modality treatment that you can purchase yourself, you can actually purchase one of these, the yeah. sonic slider, with the and it has the boot on it, so that's going to help transform. No, you're so you put you're going to have to buy the boot, but um, Eileen on the Biofield Tuning website, there's a lot of information on the Sonic Slider fork. Um, and she actually has amazing pictures of people um, uh, doing a 21 day challenge and actually using the fork on their face or using the fork on their body. And you can see, and she has pictures of before and after. And it's just amazing because kind of what it's doing is it's just it's like letting your body just settle down and release some stress. And people look like they look five or 10 years younger, right? And it's really just putting this sense of, of coherence and into your body. And I also think of it as like everything is so electrical right now, right? Yeah. This is so low, low tech and it it just works it's just it's cool to have something that's low tech you can carry around you don't have to charge it and you can yeah you and it just works it makes you feel better you can put it on your body you can also just hold it right and the vibration is you're not going to hear it but it's bringing that vibration into your field just bring the more more coherence into your field yeah yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I when I was doing my research, I saw a lady uh, talk about this specific one, and okay. she actually used it to put it on her pineal gland and her third oh, yeah. third eye to awaken to that. And she was talking about the craziest dreams and her uh, psychic abilities just opened up because uh, you know the pineal gland was so calcified just to help break up those uh, physioelectrical um, crystals inside there to open it up a bit more. And she said it was amazing. Yeah, because you know what's really cool is there is actually a whole activation called a halo activation that uh, that is used to to wake up the pineal gland, right? And to really just awaken all your intuitive, all of those senses. When I do that, it makes me feel like, okay, wow, now I've got my head on straight. 
I've got my head on straight, right? So you have to do it quite a lot because the just um, we that's been something that's been turned off, right? So to start to wake this up, it needs a little bit more uh, work on it. But yeah, it's very it's very cool. Wow. And, yeah. So have you, a, have you have you had any mystical experiences yourself with that? With uh, the doing the halo activation, yeah. Um, no, because you know what, I'm just starting it because I just came back from Vermont to do my advanced biofield tuning, and that's one of the things that you learn in the advanced module. So it's it's uh, it's yeah, it's amazing. It's very very cool. It's uh, sort of based on um, I think it's Drunvalo. I'm going to say his name, Melkachuk. Uh, right. So what he did is he went and studied, um, I think, a lot of South American cultures, right, with kind of this halo, like how to activate this. And they could actually do it with their hands. So it's pulling out these like little, um, we would think of, you know, the round electrical thing that has all the, it's in the science center, you put your hand on it and all the little electrical yes, flow to it right so we're trying to get those on and connected right and because they've been asleep for so long um it needs a little bit more entrainment right and just to wake up that pineal gland but yeah there's a whole study of that so that's really interesting wow and yeah that'd be really fascinating now is her research published anywhere or is it just on her website uh so if people were curious about that uh is that where all her yes. research is right now yeah, she would have searched um, probably on the website. She does have her, she has two books. But again, if you go, um, if you Google biofield tuning, you can uh, write or look that up on YouTube. You'll get to see a lot of what's going on with that. So yeah, and definitely she has been talking about her studies. Um, they are on um let me think. I think, you know, she talks about them in certain YouTube videos. So I'm sure underneath them, she's got the, the references. To the that. references. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's where I did my research. Cause I was, I was looking at this. Wow. Yeah, this is please. really good. And the one thing I really loved about her, the work that, you know, she was doing is the fact that it was very science-based. Like it was no fluff. She kind of no. took a point of fact, this is what's going on. This is what I believe. And she told like, this is my hypothesis. So, you know, she's trying to prove this is what's going on, which, you know, which I thought was really a great way of doing it. Instead of saying, I know, this is what I'm thinking right now. I don't know 100% yet, but from my studies and the years of practice and using that, this is what's going on. This is my best hypothesis of what's going on and how she determines that. It's such a fascinating idea. And, and the interesting thing, because I do, a, I've been doing a lot of research on, ancient techniques and healing techniques and modalities and a lot of the lost traditions and stuff like that from the past. And they always talked about vibrational healing was one of the big things that was part of the ancient history or the ancient cultures that we've had all the way back to Atlantis, Lemuria, all that, even the Egyptians, they talked about how using this type of energy work is very, very important in healing. And that's why they've talked about how the body itself can actually sustain life a lot more than the 70, 80 years that we have, we're so accustomed to, that it can extend life beyond that into hundreds, two hundreds, sometimes even three hundreds of some of the records that I was looking at. And it's really, truly fascinating. If you really kind of delve into that, it's like the old is now new, but it's not, it's not really old anymore. It's, it's still new, but at the same time, too, it's it's just truly, truly fascinating work. No, it really is. And that just goes back to that we're electrical beings, right? And we just want to charge up our battery and keep that electrical, our electrical system, like running really, really clean. Let's just clear out all the all the clutter. Let's bust the clutter, right? This all around us and kind of our thoughts, um, the stuff that we're holding on to from our past, things from our family lineage. Let's just start to clear all of that stuff out, right? And the sound and the vibration does that. And then you're able to just run a really strong and clear electrical voltage through your body, right? Which just makes you, uh, yeah, just feel so much more healthy. And just also be able to get through when you're kind of hit with stuff 
bounce back a little bit more or even have the idea of like, okay, I am, you can just focus using your breath to move that energy, right? It's like where, yeah, like you can, I, I think it's really trying to put uh, this back into something that everybody can use, right? Like you can get a tuning fork and you can start to learn about how to move your energy, how it's going to make you feel better. And the thing is, you get to be the expert with the tuning fork on how it makes you feel, right? So Yeah, I like that. Now, just quickly, can you redo this remotely? So if I was on the other side of, of Canada or the US, can you do a treatment remotely with using this at all? Yeah, 100%. So when I first did my um, two courses, uh, so in order to practice, you have to go through two of our courses. Um, they were only taught online. And originally, Eileen actually laughed at the idea. She's like, there's no way. There's no way that this, this does it right. She only held um, her courses in, um, in person, right, in Vermont. So you'd have to go to Vermont. And uh, no, and then after a while, she figured out this does work. So it's just the idea of just like music, right? Sound and vibration carries just like music and it and it works so yeah i received um a lot of that was also partially why i wanted to go to vermont because i really wanted to experience this in person um just from having only done it online but receiving tuning and doing all the training it does it it 100 percent. it's actually amazing i tuned a lot of people over zoom and had like absolutely ama amazing results. And even I was amazed. I tuned somebody as far away as India. And she was like, wow, I can't, I can't, right? I couldn't believe it. It was really, it was really fun. It was really wonderful to feel that connection. And I think that that's right. That's how we are as people. So this is a vibration of kind of like vibes, like you're kind of feeling what the other person's feeling or, Right. So we all we all know that we all know how music makes us feel right. You can hear it live or you can hear it recorded. Your favorite song is still going to make you feel good. So. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so that's happy. I'm really happy that uh, you can do it um, through Zoom and that you don't actually have to be there. Because uh, that being said, my friend, uh, we're almost out of time here. Yeah, well, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to chat with you. <laughs> I really yeah, I'm, I'm really excited too. I was, I was really, uh, really excited about the show. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask you is that if people are listening, they want to find you, they want to know a little bit more about this, have a session, things like that, where can they find you? Um, okay, they can find me at my website, which is tune into flow. Uh, dot ca and then i'm also on instagram as uh sasha that's s-a-c-h-a -A, um dot tune into flow okay so i will for all those people listening don't worry like always i have everybody's information in the video and the audio podcast below so all you do is have to kind of scroll down in the description where you see all the information there and you can contact sasha and um excuse me, and uh, be able to book a session and find out all about this and uh, get re-energized, get cleared up, get all that static, start your healing process and really, really and start enjoy life. So again, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm just going to close out the show here. So this has been the Metaphysical Mentor Podcast with Michael Philpott. Thank you so much for joining me and goodbye for now. <laughs>